Hello friends, it's me Chinwin Kodan. This is the 10th chapter in the Java multi-threading tutorial series. In this chapter, we will talk about the famous producer-consumer problem. So in this problem, you have two minimum threads. One is the producer thread and one is the consumer thread. So both these producer code or thread and this consumer thread is running parallelly. So what this producer thread will do is, is create some sort of data and put it inside a queue like this. So this producer keep on producing new data. So the limit condition is the producer can store only maximum number of EN items in the queue. That is the maximum capacity of the queue. When the producer, when the queue reaches its maximum size, the producer has to wait until the queue gets empty slot. So for example, right now there is two, let us say the maximum size is two, then the producer can't generate more data right now because the queue is filled. So it has to wait until the consumer consumes at least one data. So the consumer thread on the other hand continuously wait for the queue to get some data. Remember the producer and the consumer is running parallelly so they are waiting on the queue at the same time. They are working on the queue at the same time. So the producer thread will keep on producing until the queue is full and the consumer thread will keep on consuming until the queue is empty like this so now the queue became empty the producer will create one more item then the consumer will see that there is uh, one more item in the queue and it will take it so the main important thing of synchronization here is the boundary boundary condition that the producer must not produce when the queue is full and the consumer must not take try to take something when the queue is empty so at this point the consumer should not try to take something from the queue since there is nothing there and the producer should not produce when there is uh, when the queue is completely full so let us see how we can implement this in our java program now let us start working on the implementation of the producer consumer problem in java uh, so we have two threads here one is the consumer thread and one is the producer thread so first i'm going to create the producer thread so i created a producer class obviously we have to extend this with a thread or make it implement runnable so here i'm going to extend it with a thread class which is simple in this case then first we have to give the maximum size for the queue. So I'm going to define a static integer, so max size. And let's say that the maximum size of the queue is three. So what, the, what we mean by this is the producer can have maximum three item buffer, or it can create uh, store maximum three items in the queue. Now, in order to store the data or the produced data in the queue, we need a queue. So, in order to simulate a queue, I'm going to use a list, a simple string of array list here. So, let us say new array list. Okay. So now this will be our queue, it, its maximum capacity will be three since we have defined the maximum size equal to three. Now we have to override the run method which will be executed by the thread and we, we need a while loop here. So I'm going to add this in a try cache block because it's going to throw some exceptions in the future. So exception exp and we don't want to write it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a while loop here with infinite execution. So this will be executing infinitely and I will add a message. I will add the message or I will produce using this method called put message. So uh, the producer, as I said before, the producer will be running continuously and the consumer will also be running continuously. So that's why we have created a uh infinite loop here now we have to write the code for put message uh, which is the producer so let us rename it to something else so produce 
so I'm going to rename it as produce and here we have to make sure that only one thread get access to this method at a time we we talked about the synchronized for keyword in the previous chapter so I think it is clear to you what this means is only one thread will be able to get access to this method at a time and in the produce method first thing we have to check is whether the queue is full so that can be done using while message dot messages dot size equals maximum size i mean if the queue is full then we have to wait so for waiting we use this keyword wait and i have added the cache for this one we have to throw an exception interrupted exception so let me just throw a simple exception throws exception okay so what this mean is when the message size is full it wait indefinitely for a notification from the consumer so this is a blocking wait the thread that is executing this produce method will wait at this point until the size of the queue becomes not equal to this maximum size so what will happen is when the consumer consumes a data we will notify we will call a notify method then it will see that the message size is no longer equal to the maximum size and it is less than the maximum size and it will keep on producing so while the queue is full just wait until the queue gets empty okay then we will add so this is the production section we are adding some data so we this is where we generate the data or produce the data we need to generate some sort of data for simplicity i am simply creating a string from the local date type so what this will do is this will create current time string and add into the messages queue so this is the data uh, in order to make things clear let me take it to another variable string data then this is the generated or produced the data and then it is added into the messages queue now we need to notify or uh, in order for you know to help us for debugging we have to add a message so i'm going to add producer produced data so we'll uh, get a message that the producer just produces some data then we have to call notify method i will tell you why this notify is needed this notify is for notifying the consumer that some data is currently created so uh, that will become clear once we write the consumer method so we need one more method that is the consumer so this method the method that we are going to write will be executed or called from the consumer class but in order to keep it synchronized with the producer we have to write it here so synchronized string and consume message or i will just call it consume so in this case also we will have to throw some exception the, that will be the interrupted exception but i am just throwing some generic exceptions and here we have to first call the notify this is to notify that we the, or the consumer are going to take some data from the string and we have to uh, from the queue and we have to wait while the message queue is empty so the condition was if the queue is full the producer must wait if the queue is empty then the consumer must also wait so i hope you got the point then then after waiting and if the message queue is not empty we can simply take the data from the queue so i'm going to take the data from the queue like this so we have the messages queue and get zero so this is like taking the first element in the queue because list maintain the order and now we got the data we can remove it from the queue because it is no longer needed it is consumed so message dot remove data will remove it from the queue and we can return the message to whoever is using this consumer data so let me return the data here so this is it this is the entire core logic of the con uh, of the producer consumer problem during production if the queue size is full we will call this wait method which will cause that thread to wait until someone notifies it as soon as a consumer 
call this method and consumes the data, it will notify the producer that it is going to take out some data from the queue. And if the queue is empty, the consumer will wait and if it, once it is not empty, it will take the data, remove the data, and it will notify. So that is going to happen. So we have a producer thread right now. The next thing we need is a consumer thread. So as I said before, producer and consumer is running parallelly. They are two different independent threads. So we have the consumer. And now in order to get the data from the producer, we need a producer object in the consumer. So let me create it like this and we need a constructor so i am going to create a constructor like this you can generate the constructor using alt insert uh, which will give you this generate method and from the constructor you can easily generate the constructor like that and we need the run method so this will be executed by the consumer thread and here also we have to catch some exception so try catch exception exp and that's it then here inside this we need a while loop so the consumer can run indefinitely in this infinite loop so while true we need to get the message from the producer so string data equals producer dot consume so this is the consumer so we are calling the consumer method from another thread the consumer then we can display the message that consumed by so uh, uh, we can provide a name like this thread dot current thread dot get name so we can tell them which thread or which thread is consuming it and data then we can provide the data so that's it so this will simply take the data from the producer if there is some data in the queue and it will show the message consumed by this thread and the data was this one now we need a starting point for this application and let me create a class so producer consumer problem and obviously we need a psv a public static void main which will be the starting point of our application and now we need two things one is a producer so producer producer equals new producer which is a thread and we need a consumer right yeah so we need a consumer so which will be consumer equals new consumer and we can pass the producer object so uh, we got a producer and a consumer we have to start the producer thread like this and we have to start the consumer thread like this and let us give some name for this thread so producer dot set name and let me name this as producer one and let me name this as consumer one. okay now let us run the program and see how the producer consumer problem is solved and right now as you can see that we are generating this much data for example let us just consider a scenario of this one so the uh, producer produced three data so at this point the queue gets size one size two size three and the consumer starts by doing this like uh, uh, these three data was taken by the consumer one now in order to understand this problem better let us just assume that the consumer is consuming the data uh, very slow compared to the producer so the producer can produce the data much faster compared to the consumption speed of the consumer in order to simulate this situation let me add a 500 millisecond sleep time for the consumer so the producer is very fast it is continuously creating the data but the consumer is slow since it is sleeping for 500 milliseconds after consuming every data so in this case we will see that the produ the producer will keep on producing and the queue will get fully every time since the consumer is slow so in order to check this let us add a so condition so uh, if the queue size is full let us add a message queue limit reached waiting waiting for consumer then after that queue limit reached and this weight will be notified or this weight will 
or will be over once the consumer notifies when once the consumer notifies that it used some of the data and the queue is now free so in that case we will add a message like uh, queue is producer got notification from consumer okay now let us run the program and now you can uh, let me just stop this program so in the first case the producer produced the three data continuously because it can produce up to three data and it, the limit of the queue is reached which is the maximum size and it, it started waiting on this point so at this wait point so after that the producer got a notification from consumer that that was this notification and the consumer immediately took the first data from the queue and the producer now the queue contains only two items and the producer immediately produced another data which is then making the queue full again so the consumer consumed the next data so the, at this point when it reaches this point the queue is always full for two position minimum two position it will become full for two then three then two then three like that so in this kind of situation we can have more than one consumer to consume the data so even if the consumer is slow by having multiple consumers more data can be consumed which is created by the producer so what i'm trying to do is i am going to create another consumer and naming it as consumer two and one, one more consumer so now we have three parallel consumers running at the same time and one producer okay now let us run the program and i am sorry uh, i uh, i haven't changed this consumer to three so consumer one two three the naming was an issue there and let us run the program and right now you can see that the producer is keep on producing data and all three of the consumers are consuming from the same queue so uh, the consumer one uh, took this data the consumer two took another data from the queue so even if the consumer is slow if more than one consumer is there it can take the data in a synchronized fashion from the queue that was created by the same producer so that's the end of this guys i hope you understood this code if you have if you haven't got this clear you can find this source code in my github profile it will be available under chapter 10 so you can run this for yourself and get a better idea or clarify your confusion so as always thank you for watching this video like the video if you like it and subscribe for more